Professor Vinayak Joshi, uh, who's also the uh, organizer of uh, this conference, uh, this uh, uh, refresher course. And uh, <clears throat> let me uh, give a brief introduction. Uh, so, uh, Professor Vinayak Joshi, uh, he's uh, currently heading the heading our department, uh, which is the uh, Department of Mathematics, uh, Savitri Bai Phule, Pune University. Uh, he completed his PhD in uh, the year 2004 under the guidance of Professor Wafare um, uh, and he's worked uh, for his thesis in, in the area of uh, lattice theory and ordered sets. Uh, his main uh, research interests lie in the, uh, in the ordered sets and uh, uh, lattice theory more specifically. <clears throat> uh, from, uh, for, from about uh, last uh, 10 years or so, he has taken a keen interest in the uh, theory of zero divisor graphs associated to ordered sets and also associated to uh, algebraic structures such as rings. Uh, and he has published uh, numerous research papers in this area and also uh, in the domain of uh, general uh, lattice theory, ideal theory of uh, posets more specifically. Uh, from past uh, two or three years has also been uh, focusing on uh, union sets closed conjecture. Um, uh, which is also known as the Frankel's conjecture, <clears throat> and he has made some progress in this uh, direction. Uh, he has published uh, over uh, 50 research articles and uh, he's given many invited talks and uh, organized um, uh, many conferences and workshops in our department. Uh, he's received uh, many <coughs> uh, awards and uh, recognitions. Uh, to just a name name a few, uh, he recently delivered a uh, platinum jubilee lecture uh, entitled uh, on zero divisor graphs of ordered sets and applications to graphs associated to rings. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is uh, from the Indian National Indian Science uh, Congress. Uh, so just last year he delivered this uh, uh, lecture, platinum jubilee lecture. Uh, apart from that, he's also received the uh, Iska Young Scientist Award and uh, Suvarna Jayanti Puraskar uh, in 2002, given by National Academy of uh, Sciences, India. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, he's also completed many research projects uh, uh, given by various uh, funding agencies like DST. Uh, so uh, with this uh, brief introduction, uh, Professor Joshi, uh, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Yes. Uh, it was a uh, thanks for your kind words and it was a long introduction. In fact, not a brief. Okay. Uh, uh, let me uh, today talk about the zero divisor graphs of ordered set. Uh, this is a, this lecture is particularly a time gap arrangement. Uh, actually the scheduled lecture was by Professor, uh, yes, uh, Krishnan. And uh, he uh, told me the inability to deliver today's talk. So his talk is scheduled on 23rd Saturday uh, afternoon. So that is the change. So I have to uh, do the uh, time gap arrangement here. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, uh, in the morning, uh, Professor Arumugam sir uh, discussed various problems and uh, how the problems, actual problems are translated in the uh, language of graph theory. So uh, essentially what the, the main, uh, I can say that underlying punchline was uh, if the given problem is with you and if you want to solve it in the current scenario and if it is difficult there, so you try to formulate another problem which is equivalent to the first one and try to solve it there. So today's lecture will be of the similar kind what I'm uh, today doing. Uh, little bit of uh, graph theory, little bit of poset theory and little bit of ring theory I'm expecting here. So let me give you a brief introduction. As I told you in the, my uh, very uh, uh, first uh, inaugural session, uh, because you can see that the algebraic graph theory, uh, you can find the roots of this particular subject in the paper by Arthur Cayley in 1878. And that paper was appeared in American Journal of Math, and uh, that started the, uh, you can say the interplay between these 
graphs and groups and that seems to be the first attempt to study uh, graphs derived from algebraic structures and afterwards many such a graphs are defined and studied uh, from last uh, few uh, sessions we observed that there are many graphs. Uh, uh, Professor Aparna Lakshmana talked about the power graphs of groups. Uh, Professor Asi talked about the zero divisor graphs of rings and total graphs of rings and many more such graphs are going uh, to discuss in this workshop. <clears throat> so uh, as uh, Professor Asir talked about zero device graph, let me just again reiterate the uh, story of zero device graph. And, uh, I have to fix up some notations first of all. Now, uh, G of R will stand for uh, the zero device graph of a ring R. Of course, the ring which I'm considering are commutative ring with identity and set of uh, vertices of this graph are nothing but a set of all elements of R and two vertices are adjacent if their product is zero, okay? And uh, as uh, uh, observed in the last lecture, instead of considering all vertices, because zero is adjacent to all, and then what we did is you consider the vertex set as set of uh, Z star R. What is Z star R? The set of all non-zero zero divisors. Set of all Z of Z star R will be the set of all non zero zero divisors. And this definition was later modified by uh, Anderson and Livingston. Uh, instead of considering all the elements of the uh, ring R, they considered the only set of all non zero zero divisors. And adjacency remains same. That means uh, two vertices X and Y are adjacent uh, if their product is zero. So that is the graph which we discussed in the last lecture. Okay, and uh, as we observed that he was mainly interested in coloring of these graphs. Um, one can see that those uh, who know a little bit of graph theory, uh, they might be knowing that the coloring of graph is one of the central problem in graph theory and it is one of the difficult problem, coloring of graph is. And in fact, uh, in complexity theory, if we saw talk about, then I think this is something NP complete or NP hard, something like that. Uh, so coloring of graph is difficult. And uh, in the previous lecture, we also observed that the, we say that the graph is uh, uh, weakly perfect, weakly perfect uh, if the chromatic number is same as click number. Now keep in mind, when we are saying that chromatic number here, we are looking at the proper coloring, like that means uh, no two adjacent vertices receive the same color, okay? So if you have two adjacent vertices, then they must get different colors. So then we have to look at that coloring and minimal number of colors required to color the graph is known as the uh, chromatic number. So that is minimum number. So this is my high G, this will be chromatic number, okay? Chromatic number and this is my click number. Okay, what is a click? Click is a complete subgraph. So if I look at, if I look at, let us look at one example. So you can see that this is K3 and this is K2. Okay, so this, if I look at this is my graph, then uh, one can see that this is a complete graph on three vertices. Let us call this is K3. And this is maximal also here. Because you, if you add this vertex here in K3, this graph won't, be a complete graph because you can see that these two vertices are not adjacent. These two vertices are not there. Or I can uh, consider this K2 also, okay? This is, a, this is K2, a complete graph on two vertices. Again, this is maximal, keep in mind. So uh, here K3 is also a maximal click. K2 is also a maximal click because in K2, if I add this vertex, okay, you will not, observe that, uh, you will observe that this is not a complete graph, right? So this is also a maximal complete graph. So in this graph, I do have two clicks, okay? I do have two clicks. One is K3, that is three element, and one is K2. 
but when i am talking about click number i have to look at the maximum cardinality okay i have to look at the maximum cardinality of that maximal click i have to look at the maximum cardinality of that maximum uh, maximal click okay so i think uh, hopefully the uh, chromatic number and click number are clear to you and whenever they coincide uh, what is the usual relation the usual relation is that uh, omega g is always less equal chi g omega g is always less equal chi g this is a very well known relation and we say that if the equality holds then the graphs are known as weakly perfect graphs so in the last lecture we observed uh, we few graphs which are derived from uh, the ring r now let me give you some example of non weakly perfect graph so if i look at if i look at c5 it's a cycle on five vertices c5 now what is the uh, click number here what is the click number here can you tell me no this is huh? this is k2 right and there is no bigger click than k2 so as far as omega c5 is concerned click number is 2 click number is 2 now let me start the coloring of this graph let me start the coloring so if i color this is my black color then necessarily i have to give some different color to this vertex because both are adjacent okay both are adjacent now can i give black color here yes because i can give and you can see that these two vertex let us let us label it a b c d e so a and c are not adjacent so i can give black color to them but again i can go for again pink color here for d now can i give can i give either pink or black to the vertex e answer is no if you give black here if you give black here then you will observe that a and e will have same color back black color and what is our requirement our requirement is that uh, we don't need adjacent water she should have same color so you cannot give and if i want to give pink color to e again d and e will have same color which is not possible so the only option remains with me is i have to have some another new color and so here chi of c5 is 3 okay and so this omega of c5 is strictly less than chi of c5 and so this is non weakly perfect graph is this okay to all of you so we have a, a simple example of a, a non weakly perfect graph right let me again uh, go back to the zero divisor graph okay so if i consider the zero divisor graph of z12 okay you can observe that uh because when i'm saying zero divisor graph here i'm uh, what is my vertex set the set of all set of all non zero zero divisors set of all non zero zero divisors and what are the non zero zero divisors you can see that 3 6 9 is there 2 4 8 and 10 and this is what the graph is now why these two are adjacent because 2 into 6 that is 12 that is a zero so that's why they are adjacent 6 and 10 they are adjacent because their product is zero because we are working in z12 and you can see that 9 and 3 they are not adjacent 9 and 3 they are not adjacent uh because their their product is not zero so likewise we do have a graph now you can see that you can see that uh i colored with two colors i colored it with two colors and here the click is also two here the click is also two so that's why that's why uh, this graph is weakly perfect in fact this is a result by bake 
this is a result by is the one big uh, that the zero divisor graph gamma of zn or you can call g of zn y either way is weakly perfect so these graphs are weakly perfect okay so in general these graphs are weakly perfect and what is the chromatic number and click number that completely depend on the uh, prime power factorization of n so you have to do the prime power factorization then look at the powers collect the even and odd that distinction i will not go in that detail but uh, there is a exact formula to calculate the number of colors which are required to color the graph if i go a little further if we consider a reduced commutative ring so reduced means zero is the only nilpotent element zero is the only nilpotent element okay uh, there is no other element so if you look at uh, z12 uh, will it be uh, reduced is it reduced yeah is this ring reduced Yes, six is an important element. So no. six is an important. Is, six, is, six square is zero. Yes, so that is six zero. Square is zero. So uh, you have a non-zero nilpotent element. You have a non-zero nilpotent element, and therefore this won't be a reduced. It's not. It's not a reduced. Okay. So, but the very good thing about reduced strings are the graphs are weakly perfect. The graphs are weakly perfect of course uh, when uh, we were, we are going for the coloring uh, you might have observed that we are looking at the clicks are finite clicks because otherwise coloring will go to infinity so naturally we are restricting ourselves to whenever click is finite okay click number is finite and the interesting part of this result is that uh, what it says the number of colors which are required to color this graph that is a zero device graph of a reduced ring is nothing but the cardinality of minimal prime ideals of that ring r so very uh, nice result uh, we have on one side you have a graph parameter this is a graph parameter and one side you have algebraic parameter so uh number of colors which are required to color the graph are nothing but the number of minimal prime ideals of course again finding number of minimal prime ideals of a ring r is not easy job so of course uh you cannot say that the job is reduced but in some sense these two things are related so number of colors of zero device graph of a reduced ring is nothing but the number of minimal prime ideals of that ring r so he got two classes in fact uh, he instead of looking at zn uh, he extended the result for principal ideal ring so a ring in which every ideal is a principal ideal so in that case also the, if you look at the zero divisor graph if you look at the zero divisor graph of a principal ideal ring then that is also weakly perfect that means uh, the click number is same as chromatic number and here is another class where uh, the again the graph is weakly perfect so two classes he is able to prove uh, that uh, the zero device graphs are weakly perfect and naturally therefore he raised the question uh, that is now known as beck's conjecture uh, is the zero device graphs of uh, commutative ring r with identity is weakly perfect or not and later on in i think 1990 to this this was in 1988 if i'm not mistaken uh then anderson and nasir in 1992 proved this beck's conjecture negatively by providing an example of a local ring of 32 elements and they showed that the click number is strictly less than the chromatic number click number is strictly less than the chromatic number so this was a development and you can say that this may be a beginning of a work of zero device graphs of a ring r 
Then immediately in the same year, in 1992, there was another graph. There was another graph known as the co-maximal graph. And today I will talk about the co-maximal graph of a community Turing R with identity and how this graph can be related to a zero divisor graph of an order set. In fact, we will talk about weekly perfectness, perfectness of uh, co-maximal graphs. Uh, of course, we will use the zero divisor graphs of order set. And this is a joint work with my students, uh, Pravin Gadge and Nilesh Khandekar. Okay, so this is a brief idea of today's talk, what we are going to do. Okay, let me have a formal definition first of all. Uh, Professor P. K. Sharma and Bhattavadekar uh, define uh, another graph known as co-maximal graph, okay? And this paper appeared uh, in Journal of Algebra in 1995. And how they define, look at the uh, elements. What are the vertices? Vertices are nothing but the elements of R. Vertices are nothing but the elements of R. And two distinct vertices, two distinct vertices, X and Y are adjacent if their principal ideals are co-maximal. Their principal ideals are co-maximal, okay? That means uh, ideal sum is whole R, ring R. So you have, you have a ring R, elements are, uh, sorry, vertex uh, set of this graph is nothing but the elements of R and two vertices are adjacent if the principal ideal generated by X and Y, they are co-maximal, okay? Now, one, once this definition is clear to you, if I look at units of R, these are my units of R. So what can I say about units as far as uh, uh, the graph is concerned? Are they adjacent to each other? If U1 and U2 are two units, no. then they will be adjacent. No. They will yes. be adjacent. No. Because. No. Why? You said this one. They, they will be adjacent. Uh, are, are, what will be the ideal generated by you? Are you itself. R itself. R, R itself. So naturally, uh, the ideal yes. generated by U1 is R itself. So naturally, if I add U2, that is also R. So naturally, they are adjacent. So if you pick up any two elements from U of R, if you pick up any two elements from U of R, they will be adjacent. In fact, what is going to happen, any two elements of U of R will be adjacent any two elements of U of R will be adjacent and therefore they will form a complete graph. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Complete graph means any two vertices are adjacent. Any two vertices are adjacent. Okay, this is one observation. Now let me go for the another observation. Let us say this is my Jacobson radical. What is a Jacobson radical? This is intersection of MIs. MIs are maximal ideals of R. Okay. So what is Jacobson radical? That will be the intersection of all maximal ideals. So if I pick up, if I pick up X and Y in J of R, if I pick up X and Y in J of R, whether they will be connected to each other? If I pick up any two elements from Jacobson radical, whether they will be adjacent to each other? No. <clears throat> no, they won't be, okay? Because otherwise uh, that will give me the contradiction to the maximality of maximal ideal, right? Because we need that to be a proper ideal, that we need to be a proper ideal. So, so you can see that 
you can see that elements which are there in the uh, which are there in the maximum uh, sorry uh, jacobson radical they won't be adjacent to anyone in internally of course if you pick up any element from g of r and one element from unit they will be adjacent they will be adjacent right right because unit will generate whole ring r and therefore they will be adjacent with this x also so if i look at if i look at a simple example if i look at a simple example let us look at z6 so in z6 what are the uh, uh, elements so we have uh, what should i do one two then we have three four five and zero right or i can put zero so they are the vertices right what is this of i'm looking at z6 huh? keep in mind i'm looking at z6 now look at the ad uh, adjacency look at the adjacency so naturally naturally what can we say about one one will be adjacent to each and every one hmm? yes sir yeah so one will be adjacent to is this okay is this okay yes, what sir. about five what about five same for five same for five good. done okay now let us move to two let us move to two one is uh, sorry two is adjacent to one that's fine whether two is adjacent to five yes that is also done what about two and three are they adjacent No, sir. So we have to look at whether ideal generated by two plus three is whole ring R or not. What is X is adjacent to Y if and only if ideal generated by X plus ideal generated by Y is whole ring R. This is what the adjacency. Yeah, it would be. So two and three are adjacent or not? Yes. Yes. Yes, they are adjacent. They are adjacent. And three and four also. Yes. Huh? Three and four also, I think. Yes, three and four also. What about two and four? No, they are not adjacent. They are not adjacent. Two and four. Uh, and I think this is what the this is what the graph of uh, Z six. Just check out whether any uh, adjacency is missing or not. Just check it out. I think yes, I did correctly. Okay. Now, now, this is the graph which we drawn using all the vertices. All the vertices of ring R. as vertices of that graph now if i drop if i drop uh, the units and uh, units and uh, elements which are in the jacobson radical what will be jacobson radical here by the way what will be the jacobson radical here Yes, three. Hmm? Only, only three. Only three. No. What are the maximal yeah. ideals? Zero. Yeah, that will be zero. The maximal ideals are oh. two and three. They are the maximal ideal. Okay, they are the maximal ideals. So Jacobson radical is uh, zero ideal. Okay, and what are the units? what are the units 1 and 5 1 and 5 yes so what i'm doing now if i remove these three vertices so one will be over 
zero will be over and pi will be over. So one zero five I have removed, right? Now what is what is uh, there? Which is okay. Just let, let us have a little smaller version. This will be a graph now. Two is adjacent to three, and three is adjacent to four. So this will be a graph. Okay, this will be a graph. Uh, the notation which I'm using is gamma r. Huh? Keep in mind, this is the notation which I'm using as gamma r for co-maximal graph. So gamma of what? Z six minus Z six minus units of Z six union. Jacobson radical of Z six. I'm throwing out, right? Is this graph? You got my point. You got my point. Yeah, things are clear. Things are clear. Yes, sir. Okay. So. Uh, why I'm throwing out as uh, in the yesterday's lecture uh, in uh, uh, Professor Asi's lecture, uh, zero is thrown out and units are thrown out. Why? Because they are unnecessary. Zero is adjacent to all, so that will not any information to the graph as such. Okay. Or if I look at units only, they are adjacent to zero only. In case of zero divided graphs of order sets, uh, sorry, uh, of uh, rings. So they are not giving much information about the graphs because that is trivially true. That's why they thrown out the units and zero. That's why they thrown out these units and zero. The same situation is here also. If you look at the set of units, we know that any two uh, vertices from uh, U of Z6, they are adjacent, so just throw them out because that will give me a complete graph. And if I look at any two elements from Jacobson radical, they are not adjacent to each other, okay? That will form a independent set. So this is, an, this is a complete graph, right? Any two vertices are adjacent, whereas, This is independent. No two vertices are adjacent. Is this okay? Is this okay? So I think a little bit of idea how this co-maximal graph of a ring is looking like. So we drawn two graphs. One was considering all the elements of a ring R. Another one where we thrown out these two sets, units as well as elements which are there in the Jacobson radical, which are there in the Jacobson radical. So this we uh, thrown out. Now, as uh, I told you in the initial uh, statement was my, my initial statement was, particularly the graph coloring is very important. So people are always interested in looking at the perfect graphs, weekly perfect graphs and all that. So naturally, just like uh, zero divisor graphs of a radius ring or zero divisor graphs of uh, what you can say principal ideal ring, uh, Sharma and Batrodekar also proved that if I look at the co-maximal graph, okay, if you look at the co-maximal graph, then this co-maximal graph is weakly perfect. Co-maximal graph is weakly perfect. That means the click number, is same as chromatic number. Now, again, same story. Uh, in case of, if you look at the uh, reduced case, if you look at the reduced case, uh, it says that the click number and chroma chromatic number both are same, and that is exactly equal to the number of minimal prime ideals of that ring R. Okay, this is the case for zero divisor graphs of ordered sets. This is a case of zero divisor graphs of ordered sets. Now, a similar situation is there, a similar situation is there in the case of co-maximal graphs. In co-maximal graphs, they proved that the click number and chromatic number both are equal, 
not only that, that is equal to number of maximal ideals plus number of units because uh, we observe that that forms a, that forms a complete graph. So whenever we have a complete graph, number will increase by that cardinality. Okay. So this is essentially the uh, result by Sharma and Bhattodekar. This paper appeared in Journal of Algebra, very uh, top rated journal in uh, Journal of uh, Algebra field, and uh, which talks about the uh, cardinality of max R, of course. Now, this is what the main result we have right now for co maximal graphs. Now, uh, as I told you, as I told you, uh, then people observed that yes, these sets will not contribute much. So they thrown out and then they talked about the co maximal graph that is Maimani and others. And just now we observed that the uh, co maximal graph of Z6 in the sense of Maimani. So we have here two. Okay, so uh, I should not write two, then we have three and here we have four, right? So this is a co-maximal graph of Z6 uh, in the sense of my money because we are throwing out the units and the elements which are present in the Jacobson radical, okay? So that is the graph which we are looking at. So I have two graphs now. One is the modified uh, co-maximal graph modified co-maximal graph. And first one is the co-maximal graph where I'm considering the whole ring as my uh, vertex set. Okay. And many results were uh, proved. And the interesting thing about that, uh, of this uh, graph is many properties of zero device graphs uh, are similar to the properties of co-maximal graphs. This was the main observation. And then this, uh, what you can say, trigger our idea because this becomes, uh, uh, if you look at the very carefully, co-maximal graphs are weakly perfect. Whereas the zero device graphs of uh, non-reduced spring particularly, they need not be, they need not be weakly perfect. That means chromatic number is not same as click number, okay? So, uh, but if you compare this whole story with zero divisor graphs of ordered sets, that is a partially ordered set, then the zero divisor graphs of partially ordered sets are also weakly perfect. So there is a, what we can say, many properties which are uh, true for zero divisor graphs of partially ordered sets. They are, these properties also true for co-maximal graphs. So naturally uh, we thought that is there any relation? So that, that was the main uh, idea. And uh, what we are doing right now is uh, from ring R, we will construct a poset, partially ordered set. I will go for the definition also, don't worry. What we are doing, given a ring R, we will construct a poset. In fact, this is a lattice. And we will show that the zero device graph and this co-maximal graph have a very nice relation. Okay, so the uh, today's motive is to talk about talk about uh, this relation. Okay, I think uh, things are uh, much more clear. So main target is now main target is now to construct a partially ordered set from a ring R. What we are doing, we are constructing a partially ordered set from a ring R. Okay. Uh, before going to the actual construction, let me give you what do you mean by a, a partial ordering relation? Let us say on P. Okay. And usually it is denoted by less equal. This is a usual way. It doesn't mean that. Uh, usual less equal, but this is a notational part, okay? So what do you mean by partial ordering relation? This relation is reflexive, then anti-symmetric and transitive, okay? 
What do you mean by reflexive? So A is less equal A for every A in P. What do you mean by anti-symmetric? A is less equal B and B is less equal A. This should give me that A must be same as B for A, B in P. Okay. And transitivity is, I think, very clear to all of you. A is less equal B. B is less equal C. This will give me that A is less equal C. So that is my that is my transitivity relation. Okay. I think uh, partial ordering relation is very clear to you. Now, if I have a non-empty set which is P with this less equal relation, which is a partial order relation, then we say that this is a poset. Uh, why this poset? P stands for partially ordered set. Partially ordered and set is set. Okay, doesn't matter. No abbreviation for this. Okay, so this is my partially ordered set. In brief, I will call them as poset or also known as also known as ordered set. Also known as ordered set. So meanings are same. So this is a partially ordered set, and you can see that there are many examples. So uh, I can go for very simple example, a set of integers, if I'm looking at set of integers under usual partial order. It will be a poset. It will be a poset. And you can see that uh, when we have a poset in general, in general, this poset, we say that it is bounded. We say that it is bounded if it has the smallest element and largest element. But if I look at Z with usual partial order, if I look at Z with usual partial order, will it be a bounded poset? Will it be a bounded poset? No, no. Any no. Because, uh, no. If you see any, any element, you can go one step down and there will be another element which is below yes. that. Yes, yes. Yes. So it is not bounded. In fact, you don't have a smallest element. You don't have a largest element. But instead of this, if I consider set of natural numbers with less equal, if I consider set of naturals with less equal, uh, will it be uh, same? Uh, sorry. No. Have a no. Bounded poset? No. But whether it will have a smallest element or not. Yes, yes, yes. It will have a smallest yeah, the element. Smallest element. Yes, what is the smallest element? Smallest element is one. Okay, okay, one. one. That will be one. That will be the smallest element, right? And as far as posets are concerned, zero is denoted uh, or uh, put for a smallest element and largest element is one. This is a notational part. This one has nothing to do with this one. So this is my zero, zero of this poset. Huh? Keep in mind, though it is one, but notationally, notationally, uh, zero is my least element or smallest element. And here, one is my smallest element, but while denoting it in general, I will denote it by zero and largest element by one. Hopefully bounded posets are clear. Yes, sir, yes. Posets are clear. Yes. Sir, sir, one question. Yeah, please. Sir, um, uh, how do we denote then uh, zero of Z less equal? No, we don't have. We don't have. So yes, we don't have. Yeah, Z has no, okay, smallest. no smallest element. So if I want to. No write, smallest element. Yes. So uh, is it's. Uh, is there any notation like infinity? No, or something? no, no, no. no. So this is what the Hasse diagram. Okay. Zero is here. Zero means zero, uh, not of the Smallest poset, not the poset uh, uh, element of Z. These are the elements of Z. Okay. So minus one, and right. so it will go down, and it will it won't have a smallest element. It won't smallest have number. element. But if I look nice at number. the uh, n, then what you can do here, this one, is my two, one, two, three, and it will go up. It will go up. And you you don't have the uh, largest okay. element. 
ओके वन वन कमेंट हाँ सो हैसे डायग्राम रिप्रेजेंटेशन यू नो मे बी हेल्पफुल फॉर देम टू अंडरस्टैंड फॉर एनी पर्सन की पोसेट हैज हैसे बिकॉज दोस थ्री कंडीशंस आर यू यू कैन नॉट विजुलाइज सो हैसे डायग्राम रिप्रेजेंटेशन मे बी इफ यू कैन Okay. You got my point. So this will be a Hasse diagram. So if I look at uh, this, will be the Hasse diagram of n set of natural numbers. Yes, yes we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you can find such posets. Okay. Uh, now. let us look at one simple example one simple example this is power set of two uh, three elements so this is my singleton 1 this is my empty set singleton 2 singleton 3 1 2 if i am not mistaken 1 3 and 2 3 and this will be 1 2 3 yeah this will be a power set power set of three elements will it be okay and this is the hasse diagram under set inclusion under set inclusion okay is this okay is this okay okay yeah fine okay now let us come to the zero divisor graph of poset this is my zero divisor graph of poset now how to define it how to define it so what we have to do if we pick up this element and this element for example what is the lower cone of these two elements what is the meet of these two element now you can see that zero is the only element which is below okay so what i am doing a and b are adjacent you can only A B it's L that is the lower cone. What is A L? A L means set of those x in P such that x is less equal A for every A in A. Okay, so that is my lower cone. This is known as lower cone. This is known as lower cone. Okay, so A B L is zero. Is that okay? so this is my adjacency now you can see that q1 and q2 zero is the only element that's why they are adjacent similarly q2 and q3 their lower cone is zero that's why they are adjacent and q1 and q3 they are adjacent because their lower cone is zero but if i look at if i look at q1 and q1 star if i look at q1 and q1 star you can see that zero is the only element which is below both zero is here okay which is be be below this and there is no element which is below q1 and both q1 star zero is only so you can see that q1 is adjacent to q1 star similarly q3 is adjacent to q3 star q2 is adjacent to q2 star okay so this is what the zero divisor graph this is what the zero divisor graph now here is another graph zero divisor graph Uh, which i drawn here for understanding purpose uh, this is a power set of power set of four elements this is a power set of four elements this is a boolean poset again one more example of zero divisor graph i will not waste in uh, time this is a again a poset whose zero divisor graphs are shown now what we did here uh, i will briefly uh, make a comment and uh, uh, since i have to go um at 315 so i will make a brief comment about this connection and probably i will need to stop here uh let r be a commutative ring with identity and uh, of course i am looking at finite ring and m1 m2 mn the maximal ideals n maximal ideals uh 
and u of r is set of units and j of r is a max uh, intersection of maximal ideal that is the jacobson radical what we are doing this is the construction this is the construction what we did look at this r is my underlying set now that is my ring now i am doing the partition of that ring how i am doing the partition i will consider r suffix i1 i2 ik uh such that x is a member of r which i can i'm looking at which are there in the maximal ideals m i1 m i2 up to m i k but not in the rest of this but not in the rest of this and naturally units will not be there in any maximal ideal so wherever units are there that set i'm denoting by r phi so r phi is the set of all units and R one to n, R R one to n. That means it's a set of those elements which are there in all maximal ideal. That means they are in the Jacobson radical. They are in the Jacobson radical. So this will be the Jacobson radical. So I think hopefully this partition is clear. Now you can observe that this this will give me a partition. R will be partitioned into sets. And now what I'm doing this equivalence classes R sub fix i i am considering here looking in square r this is my notation and i will define a relation on square r i am defining a relation on square r how r i is subset of r j if and only if i is subset of j and this will be a poser this will be a poser one simple example uh, i can look at as z30 i can look at as z30 uh what is my square r now you can see that what is r phi r phi is a set of all units these are the units now what is r1 let let me call my m1 to be what are the maximal ideal maximal ideals are uh, ideal generated by 2 ideal generated by 3 ideal generated by 5 these are the maximal ideals so r1 will stands for elements which are there in m1 so you will ask me why why 10 is not there or 20 is not there because i am saying that these are these are the elements which are in m1 but not in the rest of the ideals but you can see that this this element will be in the ideal generated by 5 okay so i am partitioning the set those which are present in ideal generated by 2 they will be denoted by r1 those in the ideal generated by 3 they are in r2 uh, and similarly r3 and so on so forth okay so this is what the hasse diagram of square r and now what i'm doing what i'm doing whatever elements are there look at this r1 r1 2 4 6 8 14 16 22 26 28 20. so this element this element i will replace by this chain chain means uh, linearly ordered any two elements are comparable you can see here then this will be my r12 you can see that this is my r12 this is my r1 okay and similarly you can replace these chains right and whatever lattice i am getting is this lattice interestingly interestingly what we proved here what we proved here is the if i look at the finite commutator ring r with identity then then the co-maximal uh, graph co-maximal graph is nothing but the zero divisor graph of this lattice l which we constructed so what you can do you can uh, draw co-maximal graph of z30 and draw zero divisor graph of this lattice l this lattice l both are same both are same and since the zero divisor graphs of lattices are weakly perfect naturally the result of भाटोडेकर एंड शर्मा कम्स एज अ कवरी ऑफ अवर रिजल्ट सो दिस इज वॉट द मेन 
construction 